Welcome back to Citizen Extra. My name is Wahiga Mora. We carry on with, with uh, taking a look at some of the big stories making headlines in our country today. Now, it used to be land. That was one way to make money. Then forex schemes. Then pyramid schemes. Quail farming. And now the new way to get rich in Kenya is apparently to invest in bitcoins or cryptocurrencies, which is, um, you know, bitcoins is one of them. Now, Kenyans have taken this digital currency so seriously that according to Citibank analysts, they recently released data to show that Kenyans have invested over 163 billion shillings in the currency. And if it collapses, then that could disrupt our economy. But what exactly is Bitcoin and, of course, the other terms used around it like cryptocurrency and how is it used? That's what we want to talk about in the program right now. And we want to begin with some definitions now. What is cryptocurrency for you watching at home? It is a medium of exchange. Uh, think of it like the U.S. dollar or the Kenya shilling. But it is digital in nature and uses an encryp encryption techniques to control the creation of monetary units and to verify the transfer of funds. So cryptocurrency is basically digital money. Let's take a look at the next definition. Now, one version of cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. It's the name of the best known cryptocurrency and the one for which blockchain technology was invented. One other word that we'll be using in this discussion is blockchain, and I want to put that definition for you. Blockchain is a technology. It enables the existence of cryptocurrency, among other things. It allows two people or two machines to do transactions, sometimes anonymously, meaning they may not know each other, even if they don't trust each other, or the network between them. Of course, I know my guest in studio will help uh, to, to give his own definition. But before that, over the weekend, Mombi Waroi spoke with uh, ICT CS Joe Musheru about the rise of cryptocurrencies in Kenya, specifically Bitcoin, and this is what he had to say, even in relation to CBK, who have warned Kenyans against investing in cryptocurrencies has been concerned especially with the current craze in regards to Bitcoin and uh, we've heard them saying that uh, it is a pyramid scheme. Are you thinking of regulating? Can it be regulated or are the, the foundation that has been put in place enough to ensure that people do not lose out in what they invest in? This is similar to the internet. So it's not owned by anyone and you can't regulate then the technology because it's really a technology mm -hmm. what you can regulate is what the companies that are involved in it do the complication right now with bitcoin is that it's both a, a store of value as well as a payment mechanism yeah. because many people are demanding it the price of it is going up so in fact it's becoming a problem as a payment uh, system so you're going to really advocate for this Completely. I think central bank have a, a role and responsibility to play, and I don't think we're going to be fighting about it. I think they, they're at a place where it's what regulations we put in place, whether we're managing those companies or not. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we'll get to a point where everybody is happy. Whether we want to be part of it or not, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not our choice. The world is already moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. Pyramid or no pyramid, we need to at least take that risk. But I'm not advocating that everyone goes <laughs> and buys Bitcoin. I'm talking about the technology. Right, to help us talk a little bit about this topic that is very divisive. Some say Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is the future, you can't run away from it. Others say it's a scam, a bubble, uh, a craze that will die. And uh, to help us understand, uh, he'll tell us which side he's on, and I'm sure he's on the side that are supporting the rise of these digital currencies, is Isaac Mudui. He's the CEO and founder of Nurucoin. And uh, I'm calling it a Kenyan Bitcoin, but he says it's an African Bitcoin. And he's here to tell us a bit more about it. Isaac, welcome to the program. Thank you. Before you tell us a little bit about what you, you, you've come up with, help our viewers understand a little bit more about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. I think getting the message to people what it actually means is the first challenge. I can give you a chance now to give your own definitions, even though I did try to give some myself. Uh, thank you. We have uh, three things that we must really understand pretty well. The first of all is blockchain, over which cryptocurrencies are made. And the best... So it's the technology yes, that technology enables and, the currencies to work. And I would need to define it a little bit further, that uh, uh, blockchain is the storage of transactions in a chronological order. Okay. And uh, to define a transaction, I'm not meaning going to a shop and buying, thing, buying things. A transaction can be like a session on Facebook or a session on Twitter. That can be considered a transaction. And they are stored as they come. That is blockchain. Cryptocurrency, again, that's a digital asset that is built on, crypto uh, on blockchain. Okay. And cryptocurrencies only contribute between 10 to 15 percent of the blockchain technology. There's so much more that yes. there's another 85 or 90 percent. And uh, to be honest, 
in blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies, were only built on top of blockchain because of the nature of human beings to be given incentives. Because blockchain technology, for it to exist, there must be someone who is authenticating the transactions. Yes. And because nobody can waste their time to just authenticate transactions, for free. they must be in given incentives. Okay. And that is why we build cryptocurrencies, but not every blockchain has cryptocurrency. Okay. Yes. I, I hope you've made that a little bit easier for, for our viewers. Now, you spent the last couple of weeks doing interviews all over the place. You're telling me you are at CNBC, at you know, Forbes magazine, talking about Nurucoin. What is Nurucoin? Uh, Nurucoin is a Pan-African uh, cryptocurrency. I would call it a token that is specifically focused on solving intra-Africa trade. So it's like, so you'd almost say a competitor to Bitcoin, for example. Yes, I, I, I precisely say it would be a competitor to Bitcoin, okay. but using a much more enhanced technology, which is more friendly to African market. Okay, what do you use Nurucoin for, for example? Because I know there are certain uh, cryptocurrencies that are used for specific purposes, so what would I use Nurucoin for? Uh, Nurucoin is basically to solve intra-Africa trade and for us to understand the, the very importance of Nurucoin, we must look at the problems that we have in Africa. Uh, on my opinion, blockchain is actually made for Africa. We have more problems that can be solved by the use of blockchain more than any other place in the world. And we just begin, for example, take for example Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe's currency collapsed and that's the only country in the world that has over seven currencies. Uh, if you go to Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of Congo, you notice that they carry money with their hard bags. Why? Because during Mobutu Sesako's time, they would go to a bank and they would demand, let them put money. So people stopped trusting the bags. Somalia, they, we were, fo they were focused recently carrying money and ferrying money on tankers. Uh, if you, you are crossing from Uganda to, for example, Tanzania, you need to change money. If you get a hundred Kenya shillings and you move to a hand, just like seven African countries, your money would almost get finished. So, Africa has very volatile currency. Uganda, which looks like a free market, you find people from Kenya going to Kampala to buy goods, but the change keeps, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the inflation and the volatility of the currency in Africa is a, is a big challenge. So you want to come yeah. up with a currency that can be what, widely accepted across Africa? Africa that help can... Help ease trade, ETC? Yes, that can help into Africa trade. The World Bank says that uh, Africa trades with Africa at 11%, and we trade with the world at 66%. And one of the challenges that you send money via, uh, via any bank, it takes a whole 15 days to arrive. Okay. So with the, a, a currency that is peer-to-peer, -peer, it means that if you are in Democratic Republic of Congo and you are buying items in Uganda, you do not need to carry $200,000 in your bank. You only need to send tokens and within two minutes, the owner of cement or whatever goods they are selling in Uganda, they receive and they can send cement to you. Okay. So if I want to in use Nurucoin, for example, and this is a big discussion because yesterday an article published in The Guardian had the following headline. Are you thinking about investing in Bitcoin? Do not. Just go to the Guardian website and you can read that article. They say that a lot of people globally are investing in Bitcoin not to trade with it per se, but to speculate. Hold, wait for the price to increase and then sell. So it's not even, they're not even using it as a currency, which, you know, when 100 shillings is in your pocket, it doesn't stay there. You quickly exchange it with a product, ETC. But when you buy a piece of land, you hold it as an investment. And the Guardian is saying, while Bitcoin might work as a currency for quick exchange, it doesn't work as an investment. So what, what, what is Nurucoin? Are people buying Nurucoin to hold and sell 10 years from now and, hope, and hopefully make a profit? Do you intend for it to be used on a day-to-day on -day basis because that is where the confusion is? Uh, one, if you are just looking at cryptocurrency as the only solution and to invest on, you might really go wrong. Okay. If you are to invest on uh, blockchain and re uh, related uh, cryptocurrency, we really need very serious literacy levels and people to really be educated, and especially in Africa, about all these investments. Because if you are just buying a coin to hold, I don't think it really helps you a lot. As much as it might help you, we should look at the wide spectrum of blockchain, and especially here. Uh, uh, Nur coin is based on, we are building a whole Nur block, which should be able to support a lot of emerging businesses in Africa, including b doing business in government. And doing business in government, we just go like land issues. If we how, how will you do business in government when CBK and I'm sure central banks across Africa will be very slow to, uh, to, 
to take up cryptocurrency technology. This is what I would say. One of the worst things that can happen to any government, and that has always been a problem in Africa, is when we duck our heads under the sand and assume that the whole body is safe. It, where we are now, looking at blockchain, it is less risky than ignoring it. So, uh, if you look at, for example, Dubai, they are doing a whole smart city. Singapore, they have otherwise this. Mauritius, down in South Africa, they already have a sandbox license. And the only licenses that they have issued, six of them, you realize that they are all European licenses. That means that the Europeans are already making cryptocurrencies for Africa. Africa, we have a tendency of only waiting Three till a third party comes and make a solution. We suffer from too much analysis that goes to paralysis, that leads everybody <laughs> to paralysis. <laughs> that <laughs> instead of looking at the future of this technology, and probably now the government should be focused on creating a framework, looking into the possibility of adopting this technology. We keep analyzing till when, till when it's too late. And now a European or an American comes and makes, makes a, a, a cryptocurrency for us, and we all of us adopt, and we g become slaves like just we've been slaves to the dollar. So at this level... So you're seeking to overthrow that uh, sort of like a slave lifestyle that Africa has been stuck to for many years That's it. by having African solutions, including its own currency, which will ease trade within Africa, reducing our reliance on the rest of the world. Trust me, this, the problems that we have in Africa, we are the best people who understand them. Okay. We have, and we are the best people to solve the problems. Uh, I feel the pinch myself when I am going to Kampala to buy goods. When I am in Zimbabwe and I cannot access money, I'm the one who feels the pinch. So when you wait for Dash to come from all over to come and solve that problem, that is a problem in itself. Right now, Kenya should be talking about a, a, a kind of a crypto academy and looking into what this can do. Because by the end of the day, let's say, for example, we have created a currency like Nurcoin and money is coming over to Kenya, hard currency. By all means, definition, that is hard currency that is coming. Who will, who will regulate Nurcoin? You? Uh, we, right now there are not a lot of serious regulations. Okay. Nur, uh, Nur, uh, what we have done is that we really wanted to make sure that Nur, uh, Nurcoin lies in a framework that is regulated. So we looked in Africa, the only place where there is a license is in Mauritius. And we went and talked to the investment board in Mauritius and we applied for a license. We are the first Africans actually to apply for that sandbox license in Mauritius. So that at least we can be working in a regulated framework. Okay. And, and, and we are looking forward because we understand that there is no good framework. The government and the stakeholders will be part of the ecosystem that helps to build if this is the future. Because if this is a revolution and we ignore it as a country and as, as a continent, and then we are out. really going to, gr to regret. Dangers, fears, hacks. Uh, some people could duplicate, you know, with money, if you have a physical 100 shillings, uh, and these were some of the worries with M-Pesa, you know, at some point some were worried, can M-Pesa be hacked, ETC, but with Bitcoin, we've had incidents of hacking, how secure would Nurucoin be? How secure is digital money? Uh, the encryption technique is really very secure, and there is one uh, advantage, because this is distributed network when, where we have a lot of nodes and everybody holding a replicated uh, public clincher, you must of course hack all the nodes. But people are running crypto exchanges. The case is where we have a hard hacking, it's when you are running a crypto exchange because in a crypto exchange you hold people's money and uh, you really need to work out your system to make sure that it cannot be hacked. Okay, and, and even as we wind up, there are some people watching and they are thinking to themselves, how am I going to make money from this? They, they may not understand all the technology behind it because you need to be quite ICT literate to understand some of the behind the scenes working. But there are some who are thinking, what makes you know, Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies any different from some of the, the, the crazes we've seen from Kenyans in the past, quail farming, Ponzi schemes, and all these other businesses that Kenyans get into out of peer pressure. Kenyans are being called, come for a meeting. I want to teach you how to invest. How, how are you going to remove maybe what you would consider a noble mission on your part from what is being peddled out there, that this is something you buy, you hoard, and then you can sell for 1.3 million or, or, or amounts like that? Number one, for the last three years, we have been bu building the e-commerce that is completely based on, on blockchain technology, a Kanban called blazebay.com. Blazebay, we already have over 200 merchants in Kenya, and this is really a huge investment which we have built to make sure that our merchants manufacturers are already coming on board and they are not just getting the token for holding 
that there is trade activity. So if you go to Blaze Bay, it's a research and a prototype that we have been building, which is a full B2B e-commerce that we are pulling to all this blockchain. That is number, num number two. Uh, cryptocurrency is not money because if you are to define money as measure of value then and, and a store of value then we will not define cryptocurrency as just money like fiat currency because this is a token which you are just charging your normal asset to become a digital asset as long as it is, it is growing once you put money in the bank money is supposed to suffer inflation so as long as this is growing we cannot call it money this is just like going back to but but a trade where we were but exchanging your values with a digital token okay yes and finally uh, even as we wrap up this discussion briefly explain to us the profit model behind investing in what whether Nuru coin or bit what's what's the profit model behind that for, for for what we've gotten used to investing in the past it's very clear you buy an asset for example like land if there's demand you know or if there is a, a big infrastructure project near that land its value rises and i can sell how does that work with with bitcoin for example uh, with the cryptocurrencies uh, the uh, we, uh, two things work here we've got su uh, supply and demand supply and demand and acceptability so I want to think supply and demand is like what we are seeing now with Bitcoin. The more people want it, the higher yeah, value the, uh, rises. And the acceptability in the market. Okay. And the more people that are accepting, the better. But if you look at our business model like NuruCoin, uh, as much as we say it is a near, near zero cost at the transfer, we charge like one, between 1 and 1.5%. 1 and you can read our white paper, which is publicly available. You realize that we are leaving a certain portion that goes back to the coin holders, and that can be redeemed in all the stores that are accepting our coin anywhere in the world. Are there stores accepting your coin now? We've, like uh, uh, in Nigeria, we've just partnered with ITEX. They have 40% of the market of all point of sales in Nigeria and all their stores are accepting. So already this. there are people who can oh, walk yes. over to a Nigerian store with yes. Nuru coin on their phone or their app and, and make payments. Yes. We okay. just did a, a whole public media briefing with ITEX which is a big supply of I, 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 I point of sale systems in Nigeria and they have got a lot of stores that we have agreed on board. Isaac, uh, this is Isaac Mudui, CEO and founder Nuru coin. Thank you for Thank finding you. time to be here with us. Interesting thoughts. Again, uh, a lot of Questions uh, regarding what you've gotten into, but nevertheless, very interesting thoughts and, 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 and interesting thoughts on what's happening around the world and, and what Africa needs to be looking at as well. Well, time now for a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking about the National Super Alliance. Their principals met yesterday, and uh, reports that we received is that they failed to agree on Raila Odinga's swearing in plan. Uh, sources say that there was a bit of division even as they came out of that particular meeting and they are supposed to meet today. We will be hosting Jared Okello, Member of Parliament for Nyando and uh, David Osiani who is a public policy analyst to talk a little bit uh, about the National Super Alliance and the way forward on the other side of this break. You are watching Citizen Extra. We will be right back.